at University of São Paulo. And I'm here today to present our first game with my colleague, Tomas. Hi, Tomas. Hi, my name is Tomas. I'm a researcher and founding member of Arise. I also have a master's degree in archaeology at University of São Paulo. And we're here to present Samba Keys, A History Before Brazil. This game was a collaboration between Arise and Group Epi. And we had two amazing researchers, Jessica Mendes Cardoso and Renata Esteven, who helped us with our archaeological knowledge, right? So they were they research Samba Keys or as we know in English, shell mounds. And during the development of the game, we came up with the idea of a three-way game. Um, actually, we have a prologue, a history, and the epilogue. Uh, the first part, it's a archaeological excavation in the present. Then you get transported 3,000 years before Christ to history of the Shalman people. So you're going to get through the process and the way of living of the Shalman people. And then you got back to the present day at the museum. So here we are, Thomas, our beautiful, beautiful game. And let's talk a little bit, Thomas. So what's this, this kind of game? What's this genre of game? Well, this is an adventure point and click and at a open world environment. Um, as you can see, as I told early, we're talking about the first part of the game. It's an art, it's a modern day or present day excavation. Here you can see you as an archaeologist. Yeah, a woman. See, as a woman, yeah. And and that was something important for us because we want to showcase uh, that archaeology, you know, we have a lot of women doing and being part of excavations as archaeologists, as researchers. So that's a way to showcase that aspect of, of our scientific field that has a lot of women, especially in Shell Mound archaeology as well. Uh, who are leading the research, the excavations, and so goes on. Yeah. Uh, as you and, and, and I'm seeing here in, in, in the screen some dialogue boxes, buttons. Uh, uh, what, what is this interface? Well, since it's an adventure point and click, to some extent, you have to point and click. How yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And how do we interact? You have the eye where you can look and get some information about things. And of course, with the head, you can interact. So you can talk, you can, and in that precise environment in the prologue, we have, you can just look and interact and talk with people. So this is the first way of interaction within the game. Here you can see there is the grids and the classical way of doing archaeology. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing a, a guy named Tomas there. And, and this guy uh, is not uh, wearing a hat. Yeah, yeah <laughs> uh, a little bit of a Easter egg here. Of course, uh, Alex, since he was our <laughs> lead dev, he, the three people, the three archaeologists in the field are actually named after the club, after the team that developed the game, me, Jessica, and Renata. Uh, of course, like a very shy person, he didn't, he didn't put himself in the game but it's a kind of an Easter egg for the team that developed the game. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about this landscape. It's, it's based on a real landscape in Brazil. What, what it's, about? An 
it's an ideal idealized version but since our collaborators are researchers who work with the south, south of Santa Catarina Chow Mound context they we end up basing a lot of things on their research and on that side of the country because we have to think that Chow Mounds we have from southeast Brazil up to the south Brazil and in now in the specific case of this game since our collaborators and of, of course consultants are researchers that hope, that work with the context of south santa catarina which is one of the three states of south brazil we are more we are leaning towards that uh, knowledge as you can see here we go for the classical excavation of course we have a burial here of course it's a it's the archaeologist dream, right? <laughs> Look at the skeleton, how good he is. Look at the pottery and all of that. Perfect. It's uh, complete. It's complete. It's yeah. it's the archaeologist wet dream. <laughs> and, and now we, we're back in time. As oh, you guys saw... The same, the same landscape, maybe. Of course. Uh, as you guys saw, it's 3,000 years in the past, 3000 before Christ, of course, and you are, you are a indigenous from the Shaman people, right? Yeah. Uh, and who, here, who is this, this, this elder and why is he so sad? Why, why? Oh, let's see. Why are we so sad? So uh, he, he asked it. Uh, Oh gosh. Canto, canto. It's, a, it's not a, a, I guess this that canto is not a, a common name. In Brazil, <laughs> in Portuguese, yeah. At least, and we. Oh, let, let 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 just just a second, Thomas. Let me pause here before you answer about the the indigenous names. We have here a list of uh, a tasks uh, a task list. Let's say, and I'm seeing here a a lot of different things. What uh, can you explain? Me? explain of course. What are what they are. Of course. Um, here we have the structure in this list we have to we have to talk about the structure of the that section of the game, right? Uh, the past. Uh, we we as we were developing the game and reading about it, and of course I have to talk a little bit about how the script was done, right? So our collaborators they brought a lot of archaeological articles about some Keys, about the shamans, right? Um, about eating habits, about uh, social interactions, and a whole myriad of research and articles about those research. And that we, me and Alex, we read. And out of that, we extracted knowledge and from eating habits, burial customs, tools, all sorts of behaviors, objects, and so goes on to uh, to portray in the in this landscape that you guys see. So at the end of it at the end of this first research, we sat down and decided for this simple structure. Uh, a main mission, which is the burial rite, which is, which I will talk a little bit about uh, a little bit later, and the daily missions. So you can see fruit harvesting, uh, pig hunting, and that leads to a question. What are Sambakis? 
the Shalmans, and how did these people who were the makers of the Shalmans, how did they live, right? Uh, well, they are all this, this, this reading, right, that we did to write the game led to under us understanding that we're hunter, gatherer, fisher community. So they, as you can see, we had gathering up, collecting fruit, hunting wild boar, uh, and also fishing, right? So we had a lot of those missions because we under, we read that and of course we chose that. So the idea with this is to create a, a, an idealized, of course, experience of what is to live 3,000 years before Christ in the, an ideal version of the south of Santa Catarina, right? As a Shalmond person. Uh, I wish to address the names, right? We had a huge issue with that because, of course, there are no uh, literature with the, with the names that those people used in the past. So we end up having to choose uh, the language of the Kaingang indigenous people, which are uh, one of the many tribes of, Bra of Brazil that are still remain in our modern days. So we end up choosing that dictionary because the Kaigang people are the ones living in South Santa Catarina. So it's a way to circumvent the issue of not having names and at the same time paying respect for this indigenous group that is still lives there. Well, right here, it's interesting to talk about one of the most important and one of the most exemplary uh, arts that they have, which is the stone work that they do. Here in this mission, and it's very important for us to talk about it, is actually to have the zoolito. Mm -hmm. I unfortunately, I don't remember the name in English. How I, the name I in think English. it's zoolit. 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 Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and it's a very important part of the burial, and it's a level of craftsman that is huge. And of course, as you can see, we have two types of missions, right? Aside from main missions and daily missions, we have conditioned missions. There are missions that you need to get certain uh, aspects, certain tasks first, or need to get through some sort of time threshold. And in this case, the Zoal, geez, the Zoal is part of it. Um, and uh, let me say something here that's, that is, uh, this landscape took me almost two months Two months to <laughs> to get it done because uh, all uh, all the landscape was molded molded uh, in the Unity engine and gosh it, it's not it's not easy to <laughs> to to model some that that shell mound took me days to to get it done. And all this grass that that is bent uh, when you step on it, uh, all all of, I, I had to to program all of this, so it wasn't easy because I'm not a, a programmer. Okay, I'm a, an archaeologist, <laughs> and I had to learn something. To, in order to do that, in order to develop this game. And as a developer, I must say that I I always uh, chose the the easy uh, 
way to <laughs> to resolve this the, these missions. So as you can see, you uh, enable an, an, an action, and the object just disappear in front of you. Okay, it's not so nice uh, to see something just disappear in, uh, uh, in front of your eyes. It's, uh, but uh, that was the, the easy way to do it. And I think it, it's okay. You know? I, I, I mean, it's, it's not a shame on me. It's, <laughs> it's a game that we, we, we work it with uh, our, our passion, our free time, because this game, uh, uh, we, we didn't have any kind of funding to, to make it. Uh, so we and, and how how long it takes to to get it done, Thomas? All the, the process. The whole project was about twenty months. Twenty months. Oh. We end up. We end up. Uh, of course, from the first prototype that brought the four of us together, because we have to talk talk about this. It was four people going back and forth for 20 months, right? Yes. The whole landscape, for instance, is something interesting because the first model was way simpler. And during this back and forth between Alex and the club and our collaborators and with the help of and with the help from from pro professors at the museum and their feedback, we end up making this, of course, this, first of all, as I guess I already said that, but I'm going to say it again. If I don't, it's the first time. This is an ideal landscape, right? And that ideal landscape, of course, based on Santa Catarina's research at off shell mounds, came also with this big back and forth. So uh, there and back and forth between our researchers and the group, and of course, these professors at the, un at the museum. Uh, this landscape became this lush, so to say, because of that, right? So it was a lot of tweaking and tweaking, do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that. Since we're already making an ideal version, let's throw everything that we know. And that's the fun part of this game. Of course, we're not making a reconstruction because we all know that's impossible. It's a construction, right? So it's important to state that. And I remember we have a lot of conversations through WhatsApp groups and all showcasing that, right? So we have been going back and forth a lot into developing this. Yeah, then now we we are hunting pigs. Well, that that old lady asked us for hunt some pigs, and we don't have a, a, a weapon. And we are talking to this fellow. Just to re-emphasize, right, this is a game that we've done that four archaeologists did, made or were part of the project. So as Alex as Alex has said, we we are not developers. We we did it, of course, on our free time. So you will see that a lot of things in this game are Simplistic, we consider a triple-A game or something like that, right? As you can see, as you were able to see, the interaction with the whale change, right? As you can see, you have three 
ways to interact with environment. Looking, the, the one in the middle is interact, so you would interact. And of course, the head is to talk. So this is how you operate and work through the environment that we have. Now we have a spear. It's time to, to hunt some pigs. Yeah, of course, this community this community works with stone, stone objects. Uh, so, of course, we have to consider that. And you will have... So now let's go to the pigs. Yeah. And I, I must say that I really hate this fantastic pigs <laughs> oh they they give they give me uh, give me headache because we we have to wait the right moment to to interact with them and do this programming it's not it's not easy at all but as you can see we can <laughs> kill them in some way <laughs> i love that that part <laughs> There's a question that, as you can see in the landscape, those structures in the back, uh, they, they are there for a reason. And the researchers have a lot of um, debates about where do those people live as dwell, right? Um, where were their houses? And those structures, uh, and we call them Portuguese palafitas. I don't, unfortunately, I don't remember the name in English. Uh, those structures are one of the theories that they lived in. Actually, of course, in the archaeological context, if they existed, would be the poles. And the poles actually, the post, the post holes, as you can see, there's a lot of posts going through in the direction of the river. Those post holes are found and they are one of the hypotheses are that those posts the, the post holes are for their, their dwellings because this landscape as you can see it's a landscape that when it come when it rains the whole part of it as where the character is it floods so that would be a way to circumvent the issue of flooding. Because, of course, this was not a society who could manage that kind of water, right? So, in an engineering way. So, they understood that if they would live on high ground, and that high ground hypothesis would be the Palafitas. I, I think that palafita in English is blockhouse, something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's why I, I used the Portuguese version yeah. because uh, our, in, in of course, in the translated version in English, mm -hmm. we chose that. But uh, I'm going to use a lot of the Brazilian terms as well. So. Uh, yeah. And now during the presentation, if you guys know the name place it on the chat and yeah, in the <laughs> chat so thank you very much as well uh, uh, now we are we are in a mangrove here fishing yeah traps. as i said this would be a section of the environment that during the rain it would flood right so they have this contact with the environment that is of respect so to say because they're hunter gatherers fishermen right 
So there is this synergy with the environment that is very interesting. Interesting, And this is a very peaceful society as far as the research states because uh, there are no signs of war, no signs of physical disputes on that period. And that's interesting because they are not alone. And you will see, uh, there are more than one Samba Key in the, or Xiaomang, in the landscape. And that's intentional because they are a society. As you can see in the far corner on the, your screen, there is another Xiaomang. It's another group that you will have an interaction with during the game. And that's to showcase that these Samba Keys are not alone in the landscape. They are not isolated communities. They interact with each other. So that's where, why we do have another Samba key in the landscape. As you can see here also the fishing. Yeah. So it's a very simplistic game in the sense of this is a idealized version of a daily uh, life of a shell mound person. Uh, and of course, of the shaman communities, as you can see. And, and Thomas, I uh, let me ask you: This game is being used by teachers yes. here in Brazil, here in São Paulo, Santa Catarina. Yeah. And what about this? I, I, I mean, I, I'm seeing naked people here <laughs> or more or less naked uh, what uh, teachers told you about that what what are the point of view i don't know what they think about this new nudity in in this video game that's one of the things right uh on a broad, in a broad spectrum, so to say, of course, there is a lot of uh, modern day issues with that, right? Oh, naked people, right? But the reality is that, first of all, we had to, it was, we had to choose to some extent. And of course, you can see the, the way that they are, their lower parts are covered, right? So, we end up choose we end up choosing that, but of course the students unfortunately kind of go crazy to some extent because they are <laughs> they they are oh oh my god nude people right uh, and actually it's not even nude it's half nude uh, and of course we couldn't uh, whitewash that issue mm -hmm. because it would it would personally and of course during the discussions this came up as well we had to make a choice and this game is 100 choices right in the terms of developing it and of course the bodies of the shell mound people are a choice we couldn't put them on into western clothing right mm -hmm. that wouldn't feel right and i'm not even talking about you know a, a pair of jeans and shoes no um, I'm talking about covering their bodies. So we end up choosing to do this half cover and the students kind of go crazy and uh, because we I need to talk a little bit about the target, the, mm -hmm. the, the target demographic for this game, right? We're talking about uh, high school to... Uh, secondary school, right? Um, to kind of trying to make an, make an, uh, an equivalency from what are is the Sao Paulo, the Brazilian school method and the, the, the English, the, the American model. And of course, you know, we're talking about kids. So that's the, the issue. That's the main issue. But the thing is, 
it was and it was and is used in education because uh, we believed that uh, through gaming it's possible to learn. We even have a guide, a teacher's guide, so to say, that help uh, propose some activities to be done on uh, during classes with the video game, and one of them that end up uh, helping a lot and being interesting towards the teachers, it is the use of augmented reality. Because all the models, especially that we that Alex did, uh, end up being used on a augmented reality app in that you that is available in our website that you can use and turn around in your cell phone the objects that are in the game. That was important for us for two main issues. First, not not everyone has access to uh, computers. And in Brazil, we have this huge issue of digital inclusivity, right? To bring people, I don't, I don't even know if, I'm, if I told the, use the right term, so I'm sorry if I did or use the wrong one. And the aspect of it was to be able, since we have a community that is not, uh, does not have access to computers, to have some access to the content that the teachers can use in a way, aside from the video game, because the video game, unfortunately, is not portable to cell phones, which was a way to circumvent this issue of accessibility. So we end up having to choose that. That was why the augmented reality ends up being more interesting than the game itself, but it's part of the game. It's interesting to say as well that for us, archaeal gaming is not just a, a, an archaeological method and theory and all. We can use archaeal game to education, right? And this is a cornerstone of our eyes. It's not just about showcasing the research that is done in the museum on the Shell Mound people. It's actually Reach, reaching actually the schools, right? Because we try to to bridge together the academia world and the educational world. And that's a very important point for us and a very important task and job that we are, we value on our group as well. Yeah. As you can see, you've reached the other side. Yeah, yeah. And you can, that's a, 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 another shaman, yeah? Yeah, it's another the other... shaman. Go. No, no. I've <laughs> no. seen the, this, this reddish thing here. It's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, this is an interesting thing. I'm going to make a, a, a observation about that, right? Uh, as far as we all know, Ochre is pretty much iron oxide. That's why it's red. But the issue was, and unfortunately, I'm gonna pick the blame game to my. I'm gonna put the blame game into myself because uh, we end up doing this. Actually, red soil is oxide, iron oxide based, so it would be red. The idea is that we end up going for that because I couldn't communicate with our research, with our collaborators, if they actually got this red pigment from vegetable source. One of the classics in Brazil would be the urucum, which is a red berry that gives a red pigment. And of course, it would be red. Uh, there, you can find on the burial this red pigment but we don't know if it was for instance clay a red clay that they put in the body or 
any other type of red natural and of course not natural but not iron based that's why we end up going for red soil to be pasted to create a paste that would be in the body of the deceased and i don't we end up going as i said it was a choice to build this in the in the landscape that cut and i don't know right if someone knows it or someone knows the, something about it and i'm curious <laughs> and these are the famous shells that uh, people gathering collecting shells here and, and, and I'm, I'm I'm seeing kids here and we have some kids some children in this game and this was uh, how can I say uh, the, the educational part of this community was uh, from from the elders to the young people I, I don't know how, how to how to say that <laughs> yeah the the idea the idea that we built right in the game was about um uh how can i say an elderly society that passes on through generation the knowledge and the customs of their people right and and of course this is an archaeological uh and a research and a research based game so those those interact the presence of kids especially on the gathering of shells is something that the researchers hypothesize about it. so they give they, they built hypothesis hypothesis on on it so it's interesting to 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 state that because every interaction every person in this game from the youngest to the elder elderliest they are there because the archaeological consensus states that they are there right and in that case of the collect of the collecting of the shells it would be since is a the burial right is a right of community right it's a communal right uh they would also got the kids involved some way or another and the shell and the shell and the gathering actually of of clams so to say it's not precisely clams but of snails actually it's a type of snail it's not a clam sorry uh would be consumed at the festival would have the interaction of kids to so to showcase this uh it, this how can i say heritage to the sambaki to those buried there because they are the ancestors they are the uncles they are the grandfathers the great grandmothers and so goes on so it's to that whole this whole environment it's to develop and construct uh, that communal that you no know, that sense of community that community that is the shell mound community Just saw some capybaras, <laughs> and, yeah, now we're, well, and now we're talking about jabuticabas. I, I I think that jabuticaba it's a, a it's a, a Brazilian only fruit or not? I'm I'm not sure if we have jabuticabas. I think, I think it is. Yeah. You know, we have to think that Brazil has a huge biodiversity, right? So, as far as I'm aware. It is, of course, the whole world guys kind of knows it about it because you know, export, export, export. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as I'm aware, it is Brazilian native, one of the many, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's our favorite, so we end up placing there. Uh, and of course, there was a lot of, I, I would like to, to state something, right? There's a lot of zoo-archaeological zoo research being made. Uh, one of the, the biggest researchers in that area 
is one of the te- one of the professors at the Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology at the University of Sao Paulo. And of course, it would be all of the content was we could pick a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of archaeological research and made this game even more detailed. So we could use the zoological, zooarchaeological research on fish to showcase the type of fish and that it is and model the type of fish that we have in the game on top of that. But at the same time, it would be an even more amazing game. We, we chose not to because, of course, the biggest detail possible, the better. But it would be a you know an add-on it wouldn't make much difference to the development of this of the game but it's an amazing thing uh, and you know guess like 10 20 years from now we might go back to it and do a port i don't know <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> no, i'm not gonna do that no 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 <laughs> no, no please no, no. <laughs> But, well, 20 years from now, we might have a huge uh, grant that arise in its laboratory. We don't know, right? Then, uh, then we th- we can think about it. Yeah. <laughs> and right. he- you know, here we are. One of those big devs and that's it. Yeah. Well, we are performing uh, the, the ritual right now. Yeah. Uh, this, of course, is uh, an, I- an idealized version and that you know the c- consensus about what the burial rite should be right so you can see that you got you have the it's not just a burial rite it's a feast right so you can see the fish being the the jabuticabas are for the ritual feast the fish as well as you can see right here, right now. As you can see, there's a kid. So we, as I said, it would be a communal gathering of all ages to pay respects and to construct the, the notion of memory and the notion of belonging to that group. Of course, you can see that they're a little bit bent, like they're sad. (laughs) That was on purpose. And of course, the deposit of all the, the shroud, the zoolith as well. Back to the future, no, back to the present. (laughs) We are in a museum. (coughs) So that's the same archaeologist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's why we can call this game actually uh, not just about the shaman people, but about the research and display of the re- of the knowledge and of the archaeology, of course, of the shaman people. So it is an archaeology game, so to say. 
because of course this is this is one of the uh, talking about the augmented reality app that we have this is one of the the objects that alex modeled that are in that app and you can use with the qr code reader and it's very simple and it's a way to look on a three-dimensional way this object and of course based on real life objects and, and what is the the importance of this let let us say this relink from the, the 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 first part of excavation then the second part of the living in the past yeah. and now uh, at the museum what how are they related well uh, of course it's about uh, the archaeological heritage of brazil right and especially from pre-colonial times here in brazil we have a huge issue with uh, pre-colonial sites of all sorts, of all types of indigenous people, of all times. So we're talking about uh, 1200 in the present or 4000 before Christ. It doesn't matter, right? As a whole, uh, the pre-colonization pre settlements and indigenous people does not have the recognition that they deserve and indigenous people as a whole right so we're talking about a modern day issue as well as you can see during covid and how the indigenous people are mistreated by our government but uh modern day politics aside the the museum and actually the work that our collaborators do aside from their research they do work a lot with archaeological I don't I totally forgot the word in English unfortunately uh, but I would say they educate uh, the students in the south of Santa Catarina about the shell mound people about the conserve conservation of those sites and of course the knowledge of those sites to create uh, awareness right about that heritage and about that history so that's why we end up actually doing this museum as well, to some extent, to not only, of course, showcase the process that we already had interacted with indirectly through the game, but also to help in that sort of leaving it 100% clear, right? And you can see the pictures, right? The pictures are real pictures from archaeological sites and, of course, of archaeological uh, beings, so to say, because, of course, that's that skeleton that you saw is a person, but also of the things that the materials, right, the objects and so goes on. And of course, this is a this is a classical version of a museum, although made into a digital environment. So it it would be the classical archetypical museum, right? And this picture, for instance, that's a shell mound. That, of course, the grass, the nature, mother nature, kind of grow on top of it, as you can see. And that's a those are issues that we have in South Santa Catarina uh, of modern day occupation and and of course a total disregard for those archaeological sites. So that's actually as well an important part of the, the why of this game, why this game was done, right? Uh, the, the conservation and the education and creating conscience on the students about that material, about the importance of protecting those sites, as you can see right here. You can see how the, sh how the site is cut by trails. That's 
human modern day interaction. So that's why this game is important for Southern Santa Catarina. Archaeologists, so you can preserve those sites and make them, you know, st withstand the, the test of time, right? And to create awareness for the students. And I would like to talk as well about the the use in Sao Paulo because we have a huge issue with, as I said, as I said in Brazil, of course, in Sao Paulo is as well the same. Uh, we have a huge issue with pre-colonial uh, history, especially in our schools. So this game comes to, I hope, bridge that issue to some extent. And you can say right here the 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 explanation for the name Sambaki. Because of course now it is pretty much what you what a museum would place on those side notes that you see on display on a huge shelf. Right? So this of course, there's it's it's based on our own experiences as museum goers to some extent. So, of course, there's nothing that much innovative about it. And we we just finished our gameplay now. And well, thank you, Thomas, very much for your explanations. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you for having us and thank yeah. you for listening to us talk about the game uh, i hope we can answer your questions and any other questions we do have our own website and to ask and of course uh, go and check the game <laughs> <laughs> go play the game okay yeah thank you bye bye thank you bye